Can you use an electric mixer? If so, you can learn to operate a drill. That was a government advertisement on the onset of World War II. With so many men called to serve, 19 million women made up the workforce here at home, some of them answering the call to make everything from bombs to bombers. Tonight, a Quad City woman proud of making history is a Rosie the Riveter. Just off Highway 218, on a road the tires roll on only now and then, you'll find a town of about 90 people, never more than 100. When they do come to Swedesburg, Iowa, named for the Swedes that settled here, they come in large groups. We're getting at least 4,500 now or, or more. And they come for this, a unique collection of Swedish culture. By the 1980s, the history here was fading, and the locals were longing to keep it alive. I said what he missed most was not having Midsummer Fest with dancing and music. Louise and her family would change that. They brought back the music and so much more. Here's a letter written in 1862 from this area sent to Sweden, sent back here and translated. She began collecting and cataloging everything she could get her hands on. We have the book that says who read what book between 1880 and 1885. Every piece with its own story. Well, just to know that that uh, all these things were used one time by, by ancestors from here. This is our huckster wagon. But her life has been filled with much more than just collecting history. When the war came on. As a young girl, she decided to make some. I saw this ad in the paper about um, drafting. For the young woman who had never been far from home, it was a bold move. I guess um, I've been like that all the time. If there's something to do... And I think I would like it. I go ahead and do it. After four weeks in drafting school in Des Moines, drawing airplanes, I was losing the riveter. The call came to build them. We riveted the ailerons together for the B-29. With so many men off to war, women stepped up to the plate. We were five girls in a, in a, a home that, that turned their uh, front porch into bedrooms. Fighting for America, one B-29 at a time. In Omaha, the work was hard, hot, noisy, and physically demanding. Forty or fifty pieces that you put together and put a little cleat in it and hold it together, and then you start riveting the rest of them up, and, and somebody has to rivet and somebody has to buck. In the evenings when others rested, she stepped behind the plate and played so well. It says uh, in the newspaper clippings that, that I... Helped out anyway. Still so modest about those days. Are you a competitive person? Well, sure. Soon life would change again. Her high school sweetheart came home on leave. They married and after the war worked side by side on the farm. He had a shoulder injury, so of course she helped with the heavy lifting, along with the other chores and raising three children. Her Rosie the Riveter days were behind her, or so she thought. Until about six years ago, when she heard of a convention for women just like her that left home to make history. About 50 there at first, now down to 20, most in their 90s. I tell people that I'm 45 times 2 plus 2. Then, one year ago, the woman who still rides a bike several miles a week, still full of life and adventure, would get chosen for a new one. I'm August. A calendar girl. Since my birthday is August 11th, why they, they put me in as August. Who better to represent this time of change? Well, if I wanted to do it, I guess I went and did it. A living cultural icon. Rosie. Who used her strength to make and preserve history. On the as we celebrate Veterans Day, we take a closer look at area women honored for their service. Nearly 11,000 women were stationed in Vietnam during the war, nearly all of them volunteers. 90% were military nurses. Among them, a Quad City woman who was determined to make a difference as a woman of war. My name is Donna Johnson, and I was a nurse at the 12th Back Hospital located in Hu Chi, Vietnam. As a young girl, Donna dreamed of helping others, but she could not have imagined then the nightmares of Vietnam. It was quite an experience. Uh, I was only 23 years old, so we had only been out of nurses training about a year. 
and uh, I worked the emergency room there, so we got the casualties directly off of the helicopters to take care of, give them emergency care, and send them on into the surgery or intensive care or wherever they needed to go. The team worked night and day trying to save as many lives as they could as the war raged all around them. One time we were, had been in bed and the mortar started coming in and so we just had on like a house coat and had our hair in rollers and things like that and we didn't have time to even put our fatigues back on so we just ran over to the hospital and took care of the patients just the way we were so we, we did what we what we could, what we had to do. The young nurse found herself forced to make life and death decisions, all in a matter of seconds. Sometimes we would get 50, 60 patients in at the same time, soldiers in at the same time, and you had to triage them, which is not an easy task. Um, choose, choose who gets treated first, right. knowing that some may not survive right. the wait. Right, it was either who, who you could take care of right now and if they had a good chance and who you'd, you just felt like there was no way that you could save them anyway, so you took the ones that you felt that you could really save. Decisions that would stay with her for the rest of her life. When you're 23, you don't think a lot about death type thing. Um, and when you're there in the middle of it, you realize how valuable human life is and that each of these young men had a mother and a dad. <laughs> It was hard. Fifty years have passed, the painful memory is still so vivid, but Donna is still serving. For the past several years, she has worked with the honor flight, sending veterans to Washington, D.C. Only on this flight, she'll be there too. It's part of the first full flight of Vietnam veterans. It really feels strange to be on this side of the fence, and it feels wonderful. And I'm looking forward to uh, bonding with some of the other Vietnam veterans. And, uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of names on that wall that I took care of. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> After the emotions of the visit to the wall, she returns to the Women's Memorial in Arlington. It's great. It's great. It's, it's to have a whole museum just for women is, is really wonderful. A place where so many stories, including her own, are recorded and shared. You represent so many women that have given so much for, uh, that are often not, not recognized. That's right. And uh, I wish that more of them could have been here today. Uh, I don't know how many Vietnam women actually are in the Quad City area. Uh, but it would have been nice if there could have been more than, you know, more women here today. But a surprise is waiting this time. Hey, hey. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Good, good. Good to see you. A chance meeting with the retired Brigadier General who was instrumental in establishing this site. But you were the ones, you were the ones who did the most. But without any it's, it's a team effort. And that's true of World War One, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the nurses are the ones. And as the day comes to a close, perhaps the biggest honor is waiting for her back at home, where this long emotional day of healing began, where a community gathered 2,000 strong to give her a thank you she could have never imagined. Absolutely fantastic. It was more overwhelming than I had even expected. And as she slowly makes her way through the sea of flags, handshakes and tributes from people she doesn't know. And the little kids, I love it. I love it, the little signs that they make, and they're so happy when you tell them you like their sign. They just love that. And it's really wonderful. One more surprise. Familiar faces. Lots of familiar faces. Neighbors, family, and friends all surround her. A day a long time coming. A day that will stay with her forever. The whole day was perfect and couldn't have asked for anything better. It was one of the best days of my whole life.